So the goals of our study were to find out if it's a good idea to give high-dose B vitamins to patients who have diabetic kidney damage. It's called diabetic nephropathy. What we found out was that high-dose vitamins made the kidney function decline faster than the non-active placebo tablets. And patients who were randomized to high-dose vitamins had a higher risk of strokes and heart attacks over the three-year follow-up. Uh, so we were shocked, actually, by the results. When, the, when I first saw the results, I thought maybe we had the randomization code reversed. Uh, but we checked, and sure enough, patients on the active high-dose vitamins had lower levels of a blood clotting factor called homocysteine, which is why we were giving them the vitamins. So the, the randomization code was correct. So diabetic nephropathy is kidney damage from the diabetes. It's thought to be largely due to damage to the small artery branches in the kidneys called arterioles. It's known that homocysteine aggravates the function of those arterioles, and that's why we thought lowering homocysteine levels should make the kidney function better. Uh, so that's why we're so surprised that it didn't. People with diabetic nephropathy and significant kidney impairment, impairment of kidney function, should probably stop taking high-dose B vitamins. It doesn't mean they can't take low doses. And the, and the reasons we think um, for our results are that these B vitamins are normally excreted in the kidney, or from, via the kidney, and so we're, we're concerned that because the kidney function was impaired, these patients may have not been able to get rid of the high-dose vitamins the normal way, and they may have built up toxic doses. There have been a number of fairly large randomized control trials showing no harm of vitamins in people with normal kidney function. This is the first study that I know of that's clearly shown harm of high-dose vitamins in people with impaired kidney function. Um, one of the consequences of this study is that it means we're going to have to look at other ways of lowering homocysteine levels in patients with kidney failure, and that's something we've been working on with medications called thiols that, that bind homocysteine and get rid of it through the kidneys or through a dialysis machine. There are quite a few people presently taking high-dose vitamins to lower homocysteine, and uh, what this means is that if they have kidney failure, they shouldn't be doing that. The study will be published in JAMA, J the Journal of the American Medical Association. It was conducted not just at Western and at Robarts, but it, at academic medical centers in Toronto, McMaster, and, um, and Winnipeg.